I'm up in Lymington for motorboat and yachting today doing a used boat review of a Windy 48 Triton. It's this fellow here behind me. Now this is a boat that launched in 2008 and it fitted into the range between the flagship 52 Xanthos and the 41 Typhoon. Now if you know about boats you'll know that Windy are very much all about high quality and high performance. And the reason I'm walking down here is because I want to show you underneath the boat first of all because the options that you could have on here, which is rather interesting, is this one's on IPS drive, as you can see, but there was a stern drive option. So you could, if you wanted, have stern drives when the boat was new, or you could go with the IPS as this one is. They both ran off of Volvo Penta D6 engines, five and a half liters each, but with the stern drives, you normally got 370 horsepower, and with these, you got 435. We'll talk a little bit more about the engines when we go on board. The other thing that you find always with a Windy is a very deep V hull. So they're a great ride, great performance, and a really serious offshore boat. They're a little bit of a boater's boat, really. They're designed for people who really want to go boating. And, uh, and they do that extremely well. So we're going to have a wander around and take a look on board. As I say, this is berth on, and they've got some rather nice boats here at the moment. There's a trailer there. There's a very nice supermarine swordfish. They're a very elegant boat. And another windy, a 39 Chimera on the end. We've tested these and we like them very much. But anyway, let's go and take in the boat we've actually come here to see. So this is how she looks for up here on the boardwalk. Now, because the owners of these tend to be quite discerning, you usually find they're a very high spec and this one's no exception. This one's actually 2014, so it's one of the last. It's got a lot of options on it, like the teak side decks you can see there. It's got the hydraulic bathing platform, so that will lower the tender into the water. It's got a passerelle that extends out the back. It's a decent spec boat, this one. And it's very nicely finished as well, as you'll see when we go inside. But let's take a walk around the outside first of all. This is very windy, the way that you've got all this lovely stainless steel work everywhere. The cleats are stainless steel, even the filler caps are stainless steel. That's very typical of the mark. In fact, even the badge on the side is not only stainless steel, but it's actually screwed in place. That's never going anywhere rather than glued on as a lot of boats are. It's tiny details, but it adds up to a very nice quality boat. Big sliding roof on this one, and it's a solid roof. So it's GRP and it slides across to completely enclose this area. Again, we'll have a better look at that when we go inside. And again, very much a windy feature rather than just stainless steel for these rails. Look how they've done this in this beautiful woodwork here. That's very nice. Let's go all the way around right up to the front and then we can take a look back the day one this one is track vision that is i believe the television system and another thing that this one's got actually which is quite interesting is you'll see there's a rugby ball shaped item there's a radar across there the rain marine but just to the left of it and down slightly it's got volvo penta written on it now if you see one of those on an ips boat that is dynamic positioning system dps you can see it perhaps a little bit better here that means that you can hit a button and it will hold the boat using GPS to its specific location, so it's like a virtual anchor. Now on this one, it's got the doors that slide across the back, so you can enclose this as a deck ceiling, but actually with them open, it does make for a nice open area and they've kept the teak running all the way through, so this feels very much like an outside area, not like an internal area as a lot of deck saloons are. Very functional, you've got this nice seating around the back here and then there's a wet bar opposite. That's underneath there. This one's actually got an ice maker on it. That's another option. That's tucked away underneath. This is all storage then around the place next to it, except for this one, which is all the switch gear. So that's all tucked away in there. And again, a very nice stainless trim surrounding it. And you might think, well, where's the fridge? Well, the fridge is actually a top loading one and that lives over here. So that's where you put your drinks for outside. Now, if we look at the helm, there's a few interesting things here. It's got the lift bolster seat, so if you want to stand and drive, you can do. These just lift up like so. But in fact, it's got another thing which is quite interesting, which is a button over here. If I push that one... Now, the idea of this is to increase the height of the floor quite substantially. Let's bring that all the way out. And I will demonstrate that you can then step up onto there, and if you want to, you can drive the boat standing up 
very easily looking out over the top so you're not sort of craning and peering over you've got a really great view from here it's nice if you want to just get the wind in your hair but it's also very handy if you are maneuvering the boat because you've got of course a bit better view now a couple more very windy features are for example these gauges now what they've done if you look closely you can see that these are all engine gauges so pressure temperature batteries that kind of thing but these are paired all these across here are the same for the port engine and the starboard engine and the idea of this is that you can just glance at these and as long as they match across like this you know all as well if one of these was pointed this way and one that way well then you've got a problem and then these gauges over here are your fuel gauges twin tanks and your water gauge and there's a chain counter on this one as well which is nice this is a modification that the second owner i think has done um, so what he's done with this is rather than having the screens flush mounted as they normally are he's had those filled in and then he's had these on brackets so that when you're sat at the helm as he liked to drive the boat then you've got a very clear view of them let's just roll that one back away and then the final thing to show you over here is that's the joystick control for the pod drive it's also got a bow thruster as well so you've got a bit more leverage over the front if you need it and then again more switch gear all really beautifully installed on this stainless steel plate and the vhf radio is there as well and that window is an electric drop window so that is the cockpit or the deck saloon depending whether you've got it open or closed but what's really interesting with this boat i think is down here because generally speaking when you're under 50 feet with a sports cruiser you're into a two cabin layout with this one They've not only got a three cabin layout in here, but they've also got a really good sized saloon area. So this, as you can see, is all seating around here. The galley is opposite. That's over on that side. And this, as you'd expect, is all your drawers. And that's a bin down in that one. And then more bits and pieces tucked around here. And up in behind here those are all shaped to put your plates and so forth in it's all electric on this boat this one's got a generator on it there's an extractor fan there as well but that i think is a brilliant area and it's also got some pretty decent cabins they've really managed to cram a lot into here so we go right to the front now what they've done is put the master cabin up here and that's kind of how they've done it really because a lot of boats of this size now have the full beam master cabin further back but this is a perfectly good size and you've got hanging lockers in here and all the bits and pieces that you would need there's a stereo in this one as well there's a tv mounted up on the wall it's a very nicely appointed cabin it's not quite as big as a full beam master but let's face it we're in bed how much floor space do you need and this has its own ensuite so that's in here there's a circular shower that swings around so you don't have to get the whole compartment wet if you're showering and your sink and your loo and so on and again little bits of storage tucked away in areas like this very nicely finished and if we head back a little bit further we'll find the other two cabins now there is a day heads as well that's over here on the starboard side and again a shower so that's what you would use during the day or indeed that's shared by the two mid cabins Look how even the switches are stainless steel on this one. And then back here, you've got double bed on this side. And again, hanging locker in there. And this one then is laid out as a pair of singles. And these are, again, pretty decent sized cabins. Really. You can drop down into here. There's good headroom as we come into here. It does drop, of course, a little bit as we go over the beds, but you know, this is where you sleep and there's still actually plenty of headroom for sitting on the bed, getting changed or whatever else. I think that's a really nice layout. I like that. And I also like the finish. It's gone with a light wood in here. Yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. Anyway, let's go and talk about engines. They are back here. And they're actually right under the back but the easiest way to get to them is down through here i will mention there are a couple of hatches in the cockpit floor what's actually in here in fact is a bit of storage but these are over the engines 
So if I lift that up, you can see how that is storage, but you'll also see when we go inside the engine compartment exactly where those are. So back around here, we need to lift this cushion off. Never the easiest thing one-handed, but there it is. That one goes up. And then this drops us down to the engine compartment. So here we go. Now that is that storage area that we saw when we were in the cockpit. So that's using the area above the engines. But it looks very much to me like you can unclip this and take it out. So if you were working on the engines to do anything more serious, A, you can get to them from the top, and B, you can get a lot more room around here. But this is certainly plenty for general servicing, checking our oils, checking your levels, and so on. Now these are a pair of Volvo Penta IPS 600. As I mentioned, you can have out drives as an alternative when the boat was new. And these are 435 horsepower each. The outdrive versions were 370 horsepower each. But what's interesting is how they compare because although these are more powerful, the top speeds are almost identical. So you've got with these engines about 35 knots and with the stern drive engines about 34 knots. And also the fuel consumption is interesting. If you're doing 3000 RPM, the fuel consumption is pretty much identical. You're burning about 109, 110 litres an hour, but you're getting 27 and a half knots out of these and 28 and a half knots out of the stern drives. So the stern drives are slightly more efficient. What you gain with these, of course, is the incredible maneuverability of IPS. So you've got that joystick control, you've got the ability to make the boat go sideways, you've got a tremendous amount more control over the boat, and that's why these were so popular. And just while we're in here, I'll show you some of the engineering areas because it is just so neatly done on Wendy's. So these are the air conditioning units, that's another option that's on this boat, and you can see all the electronics along the back here everything really nicely mounted and routed. It's all very smart and very nicely done. Hot water tank is on this side, fire extinguishing system is on this side, and the generator is down here as well. Let's come on back out. Drop that hatch back down. And I'll slot that seat back on so it's all tidy. And I think we'll finish up at the helm. So that is the Windy 48 Triton. As I say, they built these to 2014, and this is one of the very last ones. And I have to say, I'm very taken with this boat. I think it's a really nice layout and of course, a really lovely quality boat as well. Mm -hmm.